Anselm's Monologium on the Being of God Chapter 15 What can or cannot be stated concerning the substance of this being? Not without reason, I am now strongly impelled to inquire as earnestly as I am able which of all the statements that may be made regarding anything is substantially applicable to this so wonderful nature. For, though I should be surprised if, among the names of words by which we design things created from nothing, and it should be found that could worthily be applied to this substance, which is the creator of all, yet we must try and see to what and reason we lead this infest this investigation. As to relative expressions, at any rate, no one can doubt that no such expression describes what is essential to that in regard to which it is rel relatively employed. Hence, if any relative prediction is made regarding to the supreme nature, it is not significant of its substance. Therefore, it is manifest that this very expression, that is nature, is the highest of all beings, or greater than those which have which have been created by it, or any other relative term that can in like manner be applied to it, does not describe its natural essence. For if none of those things ever existed in relation to which it is called supreme or greater, it would not be conceived as either supreme or greater, yet it would not, therefore, be less good or suffer the detriment to its essential greatness in any degree. And this truth is clearly seen from the fact that this nature exists to no other than itself, whatever there be that is good or great. If then the supreme nature can be so conceived of as not supreme, that still it shall be in no wise greater or less than when it is conceived of as the highest of all beings, it is manifest that the term supreme taken by itself does not describe that being which is, which is altogether greater or better than whatever is not what it is. But what this consideration so regarding the term supreme or highest, it is found to be true in like manner of other similar relative expressions. Passing over these relative predications, then, since none of them taken by itself represents the sense of anything, let our attention be turned to the discussion of other kinds of predication. Now, certainly, if one diligently considers separately whatever there is that that is not of a relative nature, either it is such that to be it, to be it is in great general better than not to be it, or such that in some cases not to be it is better than to be it. But I here understand the praises to be it and not to be it, in the same way in which I understand to be true and not to be true, to be bodily and not to be and not to be bodily and lie. Indeed, to be anything is, in general, better than not to be it, as to be wise is better than not to be so, that is, it is better to be wise than not to be wise, for the one who is just but no wise is apparently a better man than, no, what, than one who is wise but not just, yet taken by itself, it is not better not to be wise than to be wise, for everything that is not wise, simply in so in so far as it is not wise, is less than what is wa what is wise, since everything that is not wise would be, would be better if the if it were wise. In the same way, to be true is altogether better than not to be so. That is better than not to be true, and just is better than not just, and to live than not to be lived than not to live. But 
in some cases not to be a certain thing is better than to be it as not to be God may be better than to be God for it's better for men not to be God than to be God although it might be better for something to be God than not to be God lead for instance for the both namely men and lead are not God man is something as much better than God as he would be of inferior nature where he God while lead is something as much more best than God as it would be more precious where it gold. But from the fact that the supreme nature may be so conceived of as not supreme, the supreme is neither in general better than not supreme, nor not supreme better in any case than, su than supreme. From this fact, it is evident that there are many relative expressions which are no means which are by no means included in this classification. Whether, however, any are so included, I refrain from inquiring, since it is sufficient for my purpose that undoubtedly none of this, taken by itself, describes the substance of the supernatural. Since, then, it is true of whatever else there is, that if it is taken independently, to be it is better than not to be it, as it is impious to suppose that the substance of the supernatural is anything, then which what is not it is in any way better, it must be true that the substance is whatever is in general better than what is not the, what is not it. For it alone is that, that which there is nothing better at all, and which is better than all things which are not what it is. It is not a material body, then, or any of those things which the body senses discern. For, then all this, there is something better, which is not what they themselves are. For, the rational mind, as to which nobody's sense can perceive what, or of what character, or how great, it is the less discussional mind would be if it were any of those things that are in the scope of the body's senses, the greater is it is than any of these. For by no means should this supreme being be said to be any of those things to be something which they themselves are not is superior, and it should by all means, as our reasoning shows, by said to be any of those things to which everything, which is not what they themselves are, is inferior. Hence, this being must be living, wise, powerful, and all-powerful, true, just, blessed, eternal, and whatever in like manner is absolutely better than what is not it. Why then should we make any further inquiry as to what that supreme nature is, if it is manifest which of all thing which of all things it is and which which it is not.